everyone and welcome to the Springfield Township Board of Trustees regular meeting. Today is Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. The time is approximately 5.30 p.m. Ms. Kathleen Kennedy, may we please have a roll call? Yes, Mr. Hannerlong? Present. Mr. Burning? Present. Ms. Duke Davis? Present. All trustees are present. Thank you. Uh, and I'd like to ask everyone to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next on our agenda are two sets of minutes for approval, a regular work session for November 14, 2023. We have to do those separately, I forgot. Or do we do that? You can do it together. And then regular work session, November 28, 2023. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aries? Ms. Kennedy, may we please have the financial report? Sure. I guess it's just worth noting that, unfortunately, the fiscal officer, um, Dan Burning, is not able to attend the meeting tonight, so I'm filling in as the clerk this evening. So. I'll put on my best Dan Burning hat and be the fiscal officer. <laughs> um, for the month ending November 30th, 2023, the township's expenditures were $2,597,641.23 and receipts were $868,073.80. The ending cash balance of $29,101,214.50 includes obligations to expenditures, payroll, regular operating costs, ongoing capital improvement projects, and investments. I'd like to request a motion to approve the receipts, to approve the receipts, warrants, payroll expenditures, updated and current revenue, and reports for the period ending November 30th, 2023. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, and I would just like to note that Financial reports are available for viewing at the administration office, weekdays during regular business hours, or on the township's website anytime. Thank you so much, Ms. Kennedy. Uh, the next um, agenda item that we have this evening before the board is departmental action and discussion items, and I'll turn this portion of our agenda over to Mr. Christopher Gilbert, our township administrator. Thank you, Ms. Davis. You're so welcome. The uh, first action item I have is ratification of the uh, agreement, the collective bargaining agreement with our Fire Union <clears throat> International Association of Firefighters 4268 local. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, we conducted negotiations in early November. Uh, the fire union subsequently voted on a tentative agreement and they uh, unanimously approved that agreement about a week and a half ago. Um, and before you uh, this evening is the actual completed agreement that encompasses the uh, tentative uh, changes to the collective bargaining agreement that we uh, agreed to during negotiations, which were uh, related mostly to wages, obviously. Um, there are some other uh, housekeeping things in there as well. Um, but unless there are any questions of that, I would entertain a, a motion to approve and ratify the agreement with the International Association of Firefighters Local 4268. I don't have any questions. I would make a motion to approve. Seconded. Uh, Mr. Hanala? Aye. Mr. Burning? Aye. Ms. Duke Davis? Aye. The motion carries. And then the next act action item I have is regarding the township's um, employee benefit. Uh, plan our health insurance uh, we uh, selected uh, the same stop loss provider um, that we did that we had previously which is um, in US and the coverages stay the same uh, nothing has changed other than a slight increase in the fixed costs um, which is about 5.43 percent however as the board is aware our fixed costs are approximately, um, what will be this year, 318290 Last year was $301,892. Because we're self-funded, the only costs that we know of that are, that are a certainty are our fixed costs. Um, the claims, which we are being self-funded, obviously we pay all the claims up to $100,000, and any claim that exceeds $100,000, the stop-loss carrier uh, covers that amount. So. While the, the blended um, 
average increase is just under five at 4.6 cents. I'm sorry, 4.66 percent. It's kind of a misnomer because that's just a budget number that we that we appropriate for. We don't really know what our claims are going to be. So we just budget for the maximum claim liability. Um, but our, our fixed, we know that the increase is 5.43% um, in our fixed cost, which amounts to uh, just under $17,000. So with that being said, unless there are any questions regarding that, I would I just have one. Did we hit the maximum this year? No. Okay. No, we, 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 I thought not. I just we almost remember. never hit the maximum um, in aggregate. We may occasionally hit it um, department specific because the way we have to budget for health insurance is that we have three separate funds that we pay claims out of, police, fire, and then everyone else because law dictates that you can't commingle the special revenue funds. So we always want to make sure that we're using those funds to pay for another or you know department. department. So, but we never hit it on an aggregate basis. We do occasionally hit it fund specific. Well, and I think given the overall increases that that we've seen in similar organizations, this is a pretty good rate. The average increase is approaching 15% yeah. in, in the market. You know, notably, we just had a conversation with a pool where you have hundreds and hundreds of local governments that pull together, self-funded local governments that pull together, and you're apparently supposed to, you know, shield yourself from the volatility in the market with a pool. Their average rate increase was 8 or 9% for the pool participants. So it just shows you that we're doing very well on our own. And, in fact, if you look at over the past 8 to 10 years since we've been self-funded, we've probably saved well in excess of 3 to $3.5 million dollars being self-funded from what it would have been in a fully insured market. Okay. Do you need a motion? I do. So move. Seconded. Mr. Honorlong? Aye. Mr. Werning? Aye. Ms. Dukes Davis? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. And then discussion items looking at the personnel update. We had the resignation of Tristan Coomer, a full-time medic firefighter, and I'm happy. Uh, I wish him all the best. He. Uh, left us, not because he didn't like our department, but because he is going to be the assistant fire chief. Where is that at again? Stone Lake Township. Is that it, Captain Miller? Stone Lake Township. He will be their new assistant fire chief. I say all the time that you know, Miami University is the cradle of coaches. We are the cradle of chiefs. <laughs> we, we have many, many uh, police officers that went off and, and become police chiefs in other organizations, and, and now the fire is starting to do so. So... Um, we cultivate leaders here, and, and while we hate to lose them, we're glad that they're going off and will utilize the skills they gained here to lead another department. We did have the resignation of Alex Weber, part-time EMT firefighter. In the police department, there was no activity. And then in the public works department, we had the seasonal uh, employment end for uh, Zara Gardner. Is that correct? Um, Vincent Wash Washam. And in the Arts Center, we had the resignation of Ann Sloan as a guest services monitor. And then we had the new hire of Emily Cotton and Brenda Keith as guest service monitors in the Arts Center, which will hopefully be open here beginning of January. I just was back there about two hours ago, and I'm still concerned, but we will, we will push through. Um, Kim is actually back there this evening getting things put back together so she isn't here to give her community um, update or invention activities. Um, so with that being said, I will turn it back to you, Ms. Davis, unless there are any questions of the departmental activity report. No questions. No questions. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Gilbert. So next on our agenda are resolutions. First is resolution number 101-2023, a resolution authorizing the creation of a property assessed clean energy PACE fund. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Uh, Mr. Hanel? Aye. Mr. Burning? Aye. Ms. Dukes Davis? Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number 102-2023, declaring motor vehicles located on public or private property in Springfield Township, Hamilton County, Ohio, to be junk motor vehicles pursuant to RC 505.173 
and ordering the removal of such vehicles pursuant to resolution number 80-2012 and RC 505.871. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Hanalong? Aye. Mr. Burning? Aye. Ms. Dukes Davis? Aye. Resolution carries. And resolution number 103-2023, declaring nuisances pursuant to Ohio Revised Code section 505.87 at various list of properties within Springfield Township and authorizing statutory actions necessary to abate the nuisances. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Honorable? Aye. Mr. Burning? Aye. Ms. Dukes Davis? Aye. Resolution carries. Do we have any old business before the board? I do not. I do not. Do you have any new business before the board? I do not. The, the only thing I would say under new business is um, our, our, the board and our staff has been working with the uh, Port Authority to uh, try to uh, facilitate the cleanup of the old quantum chemical uh, property site uh, down in the Edgemont uh, area. This is a, a uh, prior industrial site that's part in the township, part in the city of Cincinnati. They've been under uh, a court, they've been under a court order. There was a uh, contempt hearing coming up on them for failure to clean it up as required by the court. Uh, kind of at the last minute, they, the current owners have said they've entered into a purchase sale agreement with a new entity and uh, we are going to keep on Keep, keep monitoring that situation, talking to the port, trying to come up with uh, solutions to get that property cleaned up for the citizens of Edgemont. So that's the only thing under new. Thank you. Thank you. Now we've come to the portion of our agenda, citizen participation. If there's anyone here in attendance tonight that would like to address the board, please step to the podium, state your name and address. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Reese Reynolds, and the address is 851 Galaxy Court. So I have a couple of questions or concerns. Um, we live, I live behind um, Graders, so I guess it's called Winton Dale, the subdivision. And one of my concerns, along with some of my neighbors, is that even though most of the street is um, no outlet, most of the streets are no outlet, people still feel the need to go 45, 50 miles an hour. And so we're walking our dogs and you know there are no lights at all there. And I have asked, years ago, I asked about could we get speed bumps? And so, we, I was told, no, we couldn't do speed bumps because somebody might hit a speed bump and tear up their car. So the neighbors are like, and? So if they hit a speed bump and tear up their car, that's their problem. But after having a little discussion with um, Ms. Dukes, Dukes Davis, um, she had mentioned that this is something that you, that you have been kind of discussing. So I was wondering, is there any kind of update on what can be done to help? The other part of living where we live is that we can't get in and out of the subdivision effectively. There have been multiple accidents, although the city or the, the um, county engineer says, well, they don't have, en I guess, enough accidents for it to make a difference. But one of my neighbors, her husband was badly injured from an accident because people come up Galbraith Road and they just come flying up Galbraith and if you're trying to turn on the Congress wood like he was, he ended up getting rear-ended rear and then spun around and into a pole. So for I know for the county engineer, since he doesn't live in our subdivision, it's not a big deal, but it's a big deal to us to either be able to get out of the subdivision coming off of Congresswood and onto Galbraith or getting onto Winton, that's another dangerous spot. They took away the crosswalk there and having that sign that says, don't block the intersection, now you're three lanes and if you try to pull out, 
that third lane, somebody's coming up that third lane and could hit you. So it's just, we just feel like it's really difficult um, and there's nobody that's really concerned about what's happening with the residents in the in our neighborhood. So that's... Well, first I, first I want to say thank you so much for coming, Reese. And you and I had a conversation this past weekend. We saw you at a, an event. Um, and I actually live in your neighborhood. You know yeah. that. I live on North Hill Lane. And I, I concur with those, um, the, the statements that you made about it being difficult entering in and out of our subdivision. Um, there is a do not block the intersection sign right there at, North, at, the, at the end of North Hill Lane and Winton Road, but mm -hmm. people just disregard that okay. altogether. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I turn that way every day coming southbound on Winton Road and onto my street, and I can't tell you between 3.30 and 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. I can't make that turn without someone, being, someone blocking that intersection. So we are working to address the speeding issue, but in terms of that Winton Road and Galbraith Road corridor, again, that's the county. Um, it, it, it's the, the way, where, where they determine where to put traffic signals at isn't necessarily based on accidents. It's based on what they call traffic warrants, which is the, the volume of traffic. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they have criteria, and it's actually, it's, it's a state, maybe a federal standard that they look at and determine how many vehicles have to come out of a side street onto a main thoroughfare before they decide that it warrants stopping the thoroughfare to allow vehicles to enter onto it from the side streets. Um, the same issue we have here on this, on this property, this facility, we don't have a traffic signal when you get out of this facility on the Winton Road mm -hmm. because they said there's not enough traffic coming out of this site to warrant a traffic signal to stop traffic on Winton Road. That's the same issue we have in your subdivision and it's, it's really, the county engineer isn't really looking at accidents as much as they are just the volume of traffic. Um, so we can address that. We can ask them once again to take a look at it again. But as you obviously already know, because you, you indicated, it's really going to be up to the county engineer to determine whether or not they're going to put a traffic signal up. Well, they don't, I don't understand, I, I understand what you're saying, but the reason there's a traffic light right at um, Denier, I guess it must be Denier, sure, because is because of the church. But, I mean, you don't have more people going to that. You really don't go into that church than you have living in our neighborhood. It's because it's a school as well. School. Well, the school is gone now. No, so, gone. Crystal, the only, well, um, Central Baptist, oh, St. Vivian School. Is that actually Finney Trail, not at Denier? Right, right. Yeah, Denier would probably wish they could have one also mm -hmm. because they probably have exactly the same, you know, it's the same amount of cars coming by. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference is obviously they could go through the St. Vivian's parking lot and get to a light. Right, yeah, um, we just don't, it, it's just dangerous. No, and, I, and, and, you know, and, and my statement isn't to dispute the dangerousness of it. It was more just to explain why it is the way it is. Um, not even that I agree with it. It's just the explanation of the way it, the way it is. Um, as far as the speeding goes, as, as Ms. Davis indicated, you know, years ago when you were told about the speed bump, that is in fact true. We, we still have concerns about people hitting speed bumps going to legally posted speed limit. Because as a township, we can't reduce speed below 25 miles an hour on a street. We don't have that ability legally. So we don't want to put an impediment in the road that allows someone to hit it. And if they're going 25 and hit that, that would destroy their car, which is why we're not looking at speed bumps. We're actually looking at something called a speed table, which is a much wider, um, think of it as a very wide speed bump. And they're rated to allow people to go over them, over them at 25 miles an hour, but not much more than that. So, Are those the ones that they have all down Reading Road? And there's some, one over in Clifton, yeah, I think. They're kind of called speed cushions sometimes, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is, this is a new development, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so we're, we're looking at those. And we plan to put some money in the budget for 24 to install those throughout the township. Now, we're going to have to develop criteria as to where they go because, obviously, we can't afford to put them on every street. We have 400 streets in Springfield Township, and these speed cushions to install cost about $5,500 a piece. 
So, well, if we can't get out of our street, we could at least be able to have somebody not run over us when we're walking our dogs. Understand, so understand. That's where I <laughs> we, we, Obviously, we will, we will look at that, um, your, your street, for one of those speed tables, cushions, however you describe it, and we will bring it up with the county engineer's office to see if they would look at it once again to determine whether or not it meets warrant, what they call it, to, for a traffic signal, or if they have any other ideas uh, that may allow you to get out of the intersection or out into Winton or Gabbard a little easier. So okay. we'll explore that with them. We've actually had people on the other side ask for the same thing. Yeah, the they, yeah, they have point. the same, yeah, because they're, they the they're pretty issue. landlocked too. And it, but it would resolve some of the problem if it was one right there at North Hill on either side of North That's Hill. Yeah, yeah. North yeah. Hill on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Which would make more sense to do it there than on Galbraith. Exactly. Then you would, you would achieve, you know, the other side of the street as well. Yes. And I just want to also, the last, this is the last thing. Yeah. I, um, I think it's, it feels a little better when there are new um, uh, businesses that have started to come in to the neighborhood. So we really appreciate that with the city barbecue and, and uh, Chick-fil-A and, you know, just a lot of new activity. It feels good to have energy in the township So yeah. and the hardware store. So yeah. thank you very much for those efforts. Yes. All right. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, as everyone knows, this is my last meeting as trustee, and I'm going to make it really short. Um, I just want to thank each of you for all that you've done for me over the last four years and making um, the, the township uh, an awesome place to live. Um, this is the epitome of... Um, of, of innovation, Springfield Township is the epitome of creativity, the epitome of collaboration because all of, because of each one of you. We, this is an organization that does not work in silos. The police department doesn't work in a silo by itself. Administration doesn't work in a silo by itself. All of you guys work collectively together and that's for the betterment of the township and you can see it all over the place. Um, it's been fun. We had COVID in the middle of, of my term, and um, I feel like, um, just as Reese said, there's been so much uh, great economic development and other things with the arts um, that, has, that has occurred within this last four years. And um, as my colleagues and I can take a little bit of the credit for it, it's all of you guys. It's Scott, it's Rick, it's Kathleen. It's Laura, it's Chris, it's Kim, she's not here, and all of the other 300 and some odd staff members we have. So um, it has been my distinct pleasure, and I'm so proud of myself for getting through this. <laughs> I, 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 I am too. <laughs> yeah. but, but, it's, but it's not over. Right. No. What? No. Uh -uh. Did you think you were going to get the last one? Yeah, you don't get right. The last come, come down. Um, but sir, we're going to Oh, no. Thank you. Oh, my God. You got a little pop and just a little bit. A little bit. You know, on behalf of all staff, I'm just going to call you Christy. Um, we have... We have thoroughly enjoyed working with, and more importantly, for you. Um, you know... In the, in, the, in the last four or five years, you have given us the latitude, the leeway to do what we do best. And it's, it's that kind of support, um, collaboration, like you said, between the board, the elected officials, the policymakers, and us as the implementers, staff, um, that makes this work. You know, Ms. Reynolds talked about a lot of the things that happen in the community, and that doesn't happen without a team approach that you know, philosophically, you instill in us in this organization. Um, in the last four years, we, you know, paved tens of millions of dollars of roads. We had close to 70 to $80 million in private investment into the township. And because of the groundwork that was laid with this team over the last four years, you will see hundreds of more millions of dollars of development happening in the next few years. Um, you know, on behalf of staff and, and, and for me personally, 
thank you for everything you did for us and for me over the last four years. Um, it will be something that I will remember and, and, and uh, cherish for the rest of my career. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Christy and I just want to say thank you. It has been a pleasure and an honor serving on the board with you. You've been the consummate professional and you've been an inspiration to us in so many ways. And, and your opinions, you know, they've made a difference, you know, your decisions. And um, I know there's going to be many other ways you're going to be able to contribute in the future and uh, moving on to other you know, other parts of your career, but um, thank you on behalf of not just myself, but on behalf of everybody in Springfield Township. You have, you have done an exemplary job. Okay. I know you love pomp and circumstance, <laughs> and I'm a man of few words, but I will say we love you. We're so happy to have served with you, and we're going to miss you, honey. Oh, sorry, Tom. I'm sorry, Tom. We, we try to do what's right for the residents of the township. And we, we leave politics outside. We leave our personal feelings about situations outside. And again, like I said, we do what is in the best interest of the township. And I love these guys like, like, like my family. So um, I'm going to miss them. I'm going to still bug them a little bit if Chris doesn't change the locks on me. No, I'm gonna change my number. <laughs> so again, thank you, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Mr. Hunterlong? Uh, aye. Uh, Mr. Burning? Aye. Ms. Dukes Davis? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we are in executive session. Thank you.